All right, <clears throat> according to Twitch, I am live now, <laughs> so I guess it all works. Um, there doesn't seem to be anybody in the chat yet, so I guess I'm all on my own right now. Uh, so I'm just going to hang around, see if anybody else joins. Um, it looks like I might just be on my own today, which is fine. <laughs> Um, all right, so this week, this month, should I say, for my stream, uh, I'm doing the last of three sessions, uh, setting up a VPS uh, with Ubuntu, and this time using the Open Lightspeed web server. And previously, I had done sessions on using Apache and using Nginx. Um, and now it's the turn for Open Lightspeed. I didn't know what Open Lightspeed even was until somebody mentioned it to me in a comment somewhere. Um, and basically it's a it's an open source version of, I guess, the Lightspeed server. Um, so... This is, I'm guessing, the company. They have an enterprise version. Um, and then they have the open source version, I guess. I know nothing about the product, so I can't say. Um, but it's basically an Apache. It looks like it's an Apache um, alternative. Um, so it uses similar functionality as Apache, I guess, and maybe it even extends Apache. I don't know anything about it, to be honest. Um, it claims to be quicker, or at least faster, than Nginx or Apache by default, using W3 Total Cache on Apache, Fast CGI Cache on Nginx, and LS Cache on Open Lightspeed. So it has its own caching implementations and things. Um, I'm not going to be diving into all of that. I'm basically just going to be focusing on getting a server set up with Open Lightspeed. Um, what I did discover in my research was that Open Lightspeed ships with its own control panel, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so I guess that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's what we'll be focusing on today is, is setting up Open Lightspeed. Now, usually when I and I've shared this before in previous in previous uh, live streams. When I when I set up any kind of server, um, usually what I do is I go and have a look for some kind of tutorial. And I usually start with DigitalOcean, um, and I'll do a search for DigitalOcean, and I'll do something like Ubuntu, um, open in this case Open Lightspeed. Um, and so one of the first ones I came across was. Uh, this one, actually this one, these two I came across first, I don't know when this one came about, it looks like I didn't click on that one, but this one just talks about setting up open light speed on Ubuntu 20.04. Um, I actually want to be using 22.04 because that's the most recent stable version of Ubuntu, there is a 24.04. Um, so that took me to this one, which is installing open light speed web server on 22.04. Um, and it goes through the basic processes um setting up the passwords and things which we'll get to in a second um and then it talks about setting up ports and things and then it says once you've done all that then it says you can now add any files to this example and you can serve it and it all just works and that's kind of where it stops and it doesn't really give you some instructions on how to set up a specific uh, directory to host a website or anything like that so kind of gave me some of the stuff i needed but not all of it um, and then I found this other one, which is kind of more along the lines I was looking for. 
And this is more sort of a stack. So Linux, Open Lightspeed, MariaDB, which is a fork of MySQL. So it's not the end of the world. You can kind of work around it. It's called a lump stack, which <laughs> lamp, lamp, lump. Uh, I don't know why they bother with these abbreviations, but they get funnier as they go along. Um, and so that kind of took me through a lot of the process. And I, I, it was mostly similar things that I was used to already from the previous one. Uh, but it does talk about uh, setting up some PHP things and configuring open light speed. And so it kind of got me a step further, but I still couldn't get a website to work. I, it, it talks you through the virtual host setup, but I still couldn't quite get it to work and I couldn't figure out why. Um, and then I did a bit more research and I came across another article, which I've linked to. I'm going to just open that up quickly. I came across this one. Um, let me just copy that out. Uh, and this was UpCloud. And this is talking about WordPress on Open Lightspeed. So this gave me some more information. Um, but it was a separate tutorial for Open Lightspeed. And then it was MariaDB as well. And I wanted MySQL for various reasons. I suppose you can just do it that way. Uh, but anyway, but it gave me all the bits and pieces I needed. So I've kind of cobbled this all together on a blog post on my personal site, just so that I have everything in one place. So that's what I'm going to be following today. Uh, and if you want to, I've shared the link in the chat. If you want to see all of my notes, they're all in there. Um, and everything that I, all the links that I found are also linked to the bottom. I need to actually link these up. I realize they're not linked right now, but all the sort of articles that I drew information from are all linked through there. So that's what I'll be working off today. Um, before we get started, and I see uh, Ekajeli is in the chat, I want to just mention that, I don't know if you can hear my background music. Uh, hopefully it's just nice and softly in the background. I'll turn the volume up a little bit now for a few seconds. Um, there we go. I have been using some some sort of free uh, lo-fi playlists for my live streams. And then I discovered recently somebody that I know, a friend of mine, they've launched their own um, music uh, production service called Echo Jelly. Uh, and so I reached out to Echo Jelly and Echo Jelly was kind enough to create me my own set of lo-fi tracks which is what you're listening to right now. So those will those will be in the background of all of my live streams going forward. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to Echo Jelly uh, saying thank you for for setting these up for me. Uh, I'm looking forward to to live streaming with your with your music in the background. So if you're looking for uh, audio content for your live streams or your videos or your whatever, go ahead and check out Echo Jelly. Um, I'm really enjoying the tracks. My kids are enjoying the tracks. I was playing them for my kids the other day. Um, so give that a give that a give it a look, give it a shout out, give it a look out or a look at one of the I can't think the right words are, <laughs> um, and see if it's something that you are perhaps interested in. Um, Galesh says, "Hey Jonathan, hey Galesh, uh, will there be a recording of the stream or the VOD? Will it stay on Twitch? Uh, so no, so I don't leave my VODs on Twitch, uh, but I do migrate them all over to the WordPress YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to turn that volume down just a little bit." Uh, that one always sorts of place. Um, so they do all get loaded up on the WordPress YouTube channel. Uh, they're in the, uh, I think they're in the online workshop playlist area, which I'm not going to find now, am I? Um, it's in here somewhere. We do, what I'll do is I'll do a quick search here. So let's go for Apache, for example. Um, so there's the Apache one, there's the Nginx one, so that when the Open Lightspeed one gets done, I'll add those there as well. Um, so they will be there at some point in the near future. Um, just thinking here now for a second quickly. I think we have... We have a Learn WordPress area, and I think we have the online workshops in here somewhere. Yes, there they are. There's the Learn WordPress online workshop in the Learn WordPress area on the YouTube homepage. So let me um, pop that playlist link in the chat. You can you can check that out there as well. All of our online workshops will get uh, OBS is being difficult. All our online workshops will get added there, so it'll get added to that list um, sometime sometime either this week or next week when I get a chance to upload it. So you can always find them all there um, and and do check those out. All right, so I think we are ready to get going now. Um, I am going to move my instructions over to a side window uh, just so that I can keep them on screen with me. There we go. I'm going to close down Twitch and I'm going to close down this 
and I'm going to open up my terminal because I'm going to be doing most of my work in the terminal today. Um, so what I have done uh, before we got here today is I have set up a DigitalOcean um, VPS. Um, no, not one of those, go away. Um, and as we learned from the very first version of these, I've set it up with one gig of memory because anything less than that and you struggle to install things. So this is the IP address. So I'm going to just copy that out now and just make sure we can ping that. Um, here we go. So that's the IP address rocking and rolling. Um, I have set up uh, a root user to be able to log in. So I'm going to quickly do an SSH into that IP address 159 no 159.65.2265 oh look at that 265s uh, and it's going to ask me if I want to authenticate yes that's fine uh, and I'm going to put in my password uh, which hopefully I've typed yeah there we go we're in um, so I'm in as the root user it's using Ubuntu 22.04 um, I know 24.04 is out, but it's sort of just reads point point release version. So I usually stick to 20. I usually stick to the previous version of the LTS for quite a while before I migrate over. I usually wait for the next version to come out. So I'll usually wait for 20. What will it be? 26.04 to come out before I migrate 22.04 to 24.04. I'm just weird like that. Um, but there is the server. There it is up and running and ready to rock and roll. Um, I have also, and let's just test this and make sure this is working. I've also set up. Um, a domain psychrotech.co.za to point to that uh, server so that should result in 159.65.12265 so that's perfect so that I've done previously before this so those are kind of the things you need to set up you need to set up your DNS point your A record to the IP address um, you need to point a wildcard domain to the IP address if you want to use WordPress multi-site um, that's all on your DNS side your DNS will be able to guide you through all of that I'm not going to cover that today but I've got those are the two things that I do sort of pre-configure before these sessions, but everything else I'm going to do from scratch. Um, right, so let's log in and let's get going. Um, so there is my login. It's going to ask me for my password again. There we go. And first things first, I'm going to start locking this thing down. So first I'm going to run some updates. That's always the first thing I do. First thing, first thing you should always do when you start with a new server, there's always updates to be done. Uh, so I'm going to update all the repositories. And then I'm going to upgrade all of the software that needs to be upgraded. 44 packages can be upgraded. That's good. So let's get those going. Um, I don't actually need to set the host name because when I configured the server on DigitalOcean, I gave it a host name already. So the host name has already been set. Um, but if you need to configure the host name manually from, from the terminal, you can do. Um, so that step I can just skip over. Uh, and then I'm going to want to set up the new user because I don't like to use the root user. I always like to create a sudo user. Um, it's just recommended to do that and set up uh, OpenSSH in the firewall. Um, so while these things are running, I'm going to start copying these commands out. I'm going to turn that music down just a tad because I like to have it just a little bit softer in the background when I'm working. Um, okay. All right, that's fine. Happy with that. That's all fine. Okay, so that's all updated. So now let's add the user. So it would be add user J Bossinger. I always just use my initial and my surname. It's going to ask me for a password. So I'm going to put in a password. And I'm going to just put in my name. I don't need room numbers and work phones and home phones and all those things. Yes, that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to want to add it to the pseudo user group. So user mod minus a g pseudo j Bossinger. Uh, and that's basically going to add it to the pseudo users group. And then I need to set up the firewall. So we'll go pseudo uf, what's it, ufw allow 
open SSH. Now, that's I can already SSH in because the firewall is not enabled yet, so everything's enabled. So the first thing I'm going to enable is, is the SSH logins. Um, so those are updated, and then I'm going to enable these things. So UFW, I think it's called. Is it, what does the U stand for? The FW stands for firewall. What does UFW stand for? Anyone? UFW. Uncomplicated firewall. That's right. Uncomplicated firewall. It's the new default firewall on on Ubuntu. Um, okay, so sudo ufw enable. Okay, and it says may drop existing connections. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that's all good. Uh, so if we go sudo ufw status. Okay, that's running. Now what I like to do is make sure that I can obviously log in. Um, so I like to open up a new tab and try and SSH in again, SSH root at, actually let's SSH in as the jpostinger user to make sure that works as well. At, uh, what was it? I forgot my IP address, oh, it's in the terminal there. 159.65.122.65. Okay, so now I should be able to log in with that user's password. Yay, and I can log it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Uh, and as soon as I do that, what I usually do is I exit out of the root user account and I hopefully never have to use it again. Um, so I always keep this tab open because I'm gonna have to switch between my local machine and my server in a second. Uh, so now this is my server tab. So I'm logged into the Cycrotech server there. And this is now on my MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna clear this out. Um, and the next step is to configure the SSH key pair because what I want to do is I want to set up uh, SSH key authentication. So it doesn't just require my password, it requires an SSH public and private key pair. Um, so the command that you would run would be something along the lines of this. Um, I'm going to just copy it and paste it in the, in the terminal, but I'm not going to actually run it because I already have my SSH key um, enabled. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger here so we can see that. So there we go. So it's SSH key gen. Uh, you specify the formats and the things to use uh, and then you run that it'll ask you a bunch of questions let's actually go through what that might look like um, so it says generating key pair it asks you where you want to where you want to save it to uh, it'll ask you if you want to specify a password which i recommend you do uh, and then it'll generate the private and public key pairs uh, i'm not going to do that now because i already have that uh, generated so i'm going to just cancel this uh, and then the next step is to copy your public key so you can use the cat command for that. That basically just outputs it onto the screen. So that is my public key. Uh, your public key you can share with servers and all that kind of thing. And only if the public key and the private key match, then the connection will, will be happy. So that's my public key. And then in my server, I need to create the location for the authorized keys file uh, and then copy that over. So it will be making a directory called, okay, terminal's in the way now. So it's the home folder. So this is tilde, where's my tilde? Tilde slash, that's the home directory of this user. And we create the .ssh directory. There we go. And then we want to change the permissions to that directory to 700. Um, there we go. And then we need to, I'm going to have to sudo nano this one because I'm logged in as this user. So I'm going to have to change the instructions there slightly next time. Uh, SSH authorized keys. Uh, and if you're wondering, yes, that's the spelling that's required because it's American. <laughs> uh, and now what I do is I just pop my, um, my password here. I pop my public key into that file. Um, and now I need to enable uh, the SSH uh, passwordless authentication stuff. So I open up the sshd config file. Um, uh, I like to use nano. Other folks like to use vim or vi. I just prefer nano. That's just, the, that's, just, that's just me. And I need to find the permit root login configuration and change that to no. And I need to find the password authentication one, which is actually commented out, so I always miss it. There it is. Password authentication. Comment that out and say... No. 
Okay, and then I can control X and hit uh, Y and hit enter and that saves that file. Then I discovered recently, and I think this is a recent thing on Ubuntu servers, there are sometimes, this might be a digital ocean thing. In fact, I think it is a digital ocean, digital ocean thing. Um, but sometimes there are uh, additional uh, SSH configuration files in the sshd underscore config dot d directory. Um, so if I switch to that directory and I list out the contents, you will see that. Let me actually just clear this so it's on top of the screen. No. You will see that there's these additional config settings. So there's a 50 cloud init and a 60 cloud image settings. Um, and those can sometimes have uh, password related configuration settings in them. So the 50 cloud init conf has there it is path, password authentication. Yes, so we want to change that to no. Uh, make that one no as well. Um, and then the 60 one as well. I don't think the 60 cloud image one has anything, but let's just double check. Okay, that's on that's on no anyway, so that's fine. Um, so your server may or may not have those additional configurations, but uh, if you if you do have them, it's a good idea to update them there as well. And then we can restart the SSH service. Um, that bash shouldn't be there. I'm gonna, I, I, <laughs> I did make a comment at the top of this article that this is very much a note dump, um, and so I need to improve it. So I'm using this live stream as a reminder to improve it. So I might just fix it up while we're here. Um, so I'm just going to copy out that bit there. Uh, and I'm going to restart the SSH service. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to edit this post while we're here. This is in my WordPress blog, so I can just hit edit there. Uh, and I'm going to fix up those two issues that I saw. So the one was these things weren't licked up. So sorry, folks, I'm now forcing you to watch me fix my personal tutorials. Um, but if I don't do it now, then I'll never get around to it. <laughs> OK, that's that one. Let's do that one. I have to say, this is one of my favorite features of the block editor in WordPress. The ability to just select a link and just turn it into a link. Well, there's probably a keyboard shortcut for it as well, but I don't. Yeah, option K on a Mac. Um, OK, where were we? I needed to uh, just see here. But yes, I created the user, set up the firewall, and then I tested it. I didn't make a note of testing it. Um, so let's say test by logging in as the new sudo user. Okay, and then this I needed to sudo because I'm logged in as that user. There. And then that one as well. And then that was fine, that was fine, that was fine. But this required something. I need to take the bash away. And this needs to be code. There we go. All right. So Max fixes that up. Uh, and let's go back to the post. Cool. So now we've done the initial uh, links, 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 links. <laughs> now we've done the initial server setup. Now we can get onto installing all the software we need. Now, the nice thing about Open Lightspeed is it's really quick and easy to install. That's one thing I like about it. Um, and when you install it, you install the PHP stuff that you need. You, it installs a whole bunch of stuff for you. So the process is a lot simpler than Nginx or, or, or Apache. So the first thing you do is you get this repo uh, uh, script. Um, basically, the repo script, let's just open that up quickly. Uh, it's basically a, okay, it's not going to open in my browser. Um, but it's basically a bunch of commands that run on your machine to install repositories. So I'm going to run that. Um, one thing about SH scripts, bash scripts, is it's actually not recommended that you download them and just run them on your servers. Um, in this case, let me just see if it actually keeps it on. No, it doesn't. Um, in this case, you know, it is safe. I've tested this, but usually a good idea is to check the script, download it somewhere first, check the contents of it before you before you run something on your server if you don't know that it's trusted. Uh, and then I need to uh, update my repositories because now I've basically added new repos to my, to my server. So I need to tell my server to fetch the latest information from them. Um, and then I can install 
uh, open light speed with apt on, on this Ubuntu server. So sudo apt install open light speed. And this installs a whole bunch of stuff. As you can see, it installs some PHP stuff. It installs a bunch of uh, utility things. Um, uh, it's running PHP 7.4 on this version of Open Lightspeed on this server. It also installs some PHP 8.1 things. Um, this is related to the version of Ubuntu that I'm using. I think the most recent version of PHP on Ubuntu 2204 is version 8.1 of PHP. So that's what I'm going to install today. Uh, you can do 8.2 and 8.3 if you want to, but I'm just going to stick to sort of the defaults. So the defaults on, on Ubuntu are either 7.4 or 8.1. So Open Lightspeed installs all of that for you as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and let that run and have a sip of coffee while I wait. <laughs> Now, yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. Oh, why is it not triggering? Okay. Now, what's interesting about that is I bet you if you went back and watched the videos on Apache and Nginx, the open Lightspeed installation is quicker than the Apache or Nginx installation separately. Um, I feel like it is, and it's installing PHP and all that for you. So that's one really cool thing about open Lightspeed that I did not know. Um, but now it's installed and now you have a fully working server. Um, so if I copy out this command, you can run the status command just to see the status of your server on your machine. So there it is, there it's running. Um, currently we can't browse to the admin interface because we haven't allowed that in the uh, firewall. So let's do that now. So basically this is going to allow port 780, port 80, port 443 and port 8088. Um, 780 and 8088 are related to um, open line speed. I'll show you those in a second. Port 80 and 443 are obviously related to HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So those are the ones that we want to allow. And then we should, we can just, you don't have to run the status command, but it's a good idea always to check that everything is what you need it to be. So there we go. Open SSH is still being allowed. Port 80, 443, 780, and 8088, and TCP is being allowed. You could do you could do those individually. You could go, you know, sudo ufw allow 780, and then one for 80 and one for 443, or you can just do it in one line like this. Uh, you know, it's up to you how, how you want to do that. And the cool thing with that now is now if I browse to 15965, 12265, uh, not that. I'm going to need the, uh, what is it? 8088 uh, it takes me congratulations you have successfully installed the open lightspeed web server now you'd be able to test this from your side if you want to i guess eventually you wouldn't want to leave that that port open like that um you'd want to you'd want to maybe just shut it down by default i don't know for the purposes of today i'm just going to leave it running i'm going to destroy the server after this session anyway so it doesn't bother me um but what's cool is you have things like cgi scripts uh, installed that can work you can test your PHP version, so you can see I'm running PHP 7.4. So it's a re even even creates a PHP info, info page for me, which normally you have to do you know manually. Um, it has you know customized error pages and all kinds of other fun things. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you know you can you can test and you can test a file up, upload progress module. I don't know how this works. I'm not even going to worry about it for now. Um, and then there's some information about Open Lightspeed and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot of information on there. All right. Next up, I'm going to need to install uh, the MySQL server. So I'm just going to run the install command, <clears throat> and that can just do its thing. And then, because I want to be able to specify usernames and passwords for a WordPress site, I'm going to need to update the uh, root. Well, I just prefer to update the root username and password. Um, because then it makes things like PHP my, my admin easier. Um, if you don't need those things, you can just leave the next step. You can just use, you know, the, the root login as it is currently. Um, but I prefer to, to update it with an actual password. Um, so while that's running, I'm going to copy this out.
And that's fine. And then I'm going to just log into MySQL and update the password quickly. And I'm just going to change this to um, a simple password for now because when I run the secure installation steps, it'll update it on that side. Oh, that didn't work. That's annoying. So, sudo MySQL. Um, oh, it did work. I copied it and it did it. <laughs> I didn't see that. I copied the whole thing and it just ran it and then exited. Uh, so it updated its password, flushed the privileges and exited. So that's fine. Um, so now I can run the MySQL secure installation. So let's do that. Uh, now I know what the password is. So I can pop the password in there. Uh, yes, I want to have the validate password component. Normally I would recommend going for strong um, things, strong uh, password validation, but I'm going to go for medium right now. Um, actually, no, I think I did say strong in the, um, in the thing here. And I want to change the password for root. Yes, indeed, doodly. And now I'm going to actually specify a password that nobody can see. So it's an actual, uh, secure password. <laughs> uh, and let's see if I can do that again out of memory. Uh, do you wish to, okay. Yes. I want to use that password. Remove anonymous users, yes. Disallow login remotely, yes. Remove test databases, yes. Reload table prejudices, yes. And I'm done. Okay, so now I've secured my MySQL installation. Um, and while I was doing that, Chris joined us. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Chris says, I was wondering what that blip noise was. I replaced mine with a duck quack. Much funnier. <laughs> that's awesome. I should do that. Um, that's that's an awesome idea. I should really do that. <laughs> Duck quack when you get an error on your server. That's brilliant. Uh, okay, so we've secured um, the mice uh, SQLs um, installation, which is great. Um, and then manually. So if I go, to, uh, if you remember earlier, we looked at the Open Lightspeed site, and you'll see we were running by default. We were running PHP seven point four, which not the worst idea, but I'd like to get to at least a more up-to-date version. Uh, as I mentioned, the common, <clears throat> the current stable version of PHP on Ubuntu 2020.204 is 8.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this to install all of those. I think they are probably already installed anyway, um, but I'm just going to make sure. So it's uh, the LS version of PHP 8.1 and the LS version of PHP 8.1 common packages and MySQL related packages. Um, so yeah, there were some additional ones that I need to install. So let's just run that. You could also just have lsphp 8.1 hyphen common and then space lsphp 8.1 hyphen common PHP. Whichever one works for you, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's all that installed. Um, and then what I also would like to do is I want to install the PHP 8.1 CLI. This is so I can run uh, some command line things related to PHP and WordPress a bit later. So I like to have that installed as well. Um, so let's do that now. Again, this is saying things about uh, rebooting and kernels and it keeps coming up. So I'm going to actually just shut down this machine quickly. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go sudo shut down minus R. Now what that's going to do is going to shut down the machine and reboot it. So I'm going to get kicked out of there. And then what I like to do is just have a look at the graphs and see if the graphs are saying anything. It takes a few seconds to reboot. Um, but let me try and log in here again. Connection refused. Connection refused. It would be terrible if it just sat there forever with connection refused because I did something wrong. <laughs> oh wait, I'm still logged into the server. Hang on. No, I'm not. Okay, let's try again. Let's see if I can log in now. There we go. It's up and running again. It took a little bit longer than I'm used to, but there it is. It's working. Um, okay. So now I shouldn't get those kernel error messages as I continue with this installation. Okay, um, then Lightspeed has this very cool web-based administration portal. Um, and so to, to set up the admin, you run this command, this user local LWS, LSWS admin, misc admin password script. Uh, so you run that with your pseudo user and it basically asks you to set up uh, let me just log in with my 
user password here. It asks you to specify a username for your administrator. So I'm going to just make that the same as the server's administrator name. Uh, and then it asks you to specify a password. So this is the password required to log into the web interface. So I try and make this separate from my server password. Um, so I'm going to call it something else. Um, and let's go. <laughs> Okay, I did it wrong. Let me try that again. Yay, that's updated. And now with that in place, you can go to this URL over here, so your IP address or whatever, and you can go to port 7080. Um, no, 7080. 7080. And it takes you to this very cool okay doesn't take you there yet it's giving me a connection is not private it's trying to serve this over https i haven't configured uh ssl certificates for the server yet i'm probably not going to um so for now i'm just going to say it's fine i don't mind uh proceed it's it's you know i'm happy that it's unsafe so to speak um, but it gives you this very cool admin interface uh, and then you can log in with your username and password that you just configured so that 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 There we go, and it's not logging me in for some reason. That's annoying. <laughs> Did I type it wrong again? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yay, I'm logged in. Um, okay, and what's cool about this dashboard is you can see and do quite a lot on this dashboard. Now, I had no idea when I first started looking into Open Lightspeed that this was even an option. Um, but it has things like live feeds, your sort of uptime of your server. Um, so this is, to me, this is very, very cool to be able to see this kind of thing. Um, you have server configuration things that you can do. Um, you can set up script handlers, app handlers, modules, all kinds of other fun things. Uh, you can set up what's called a listener, and we'll dive into listeners in a second. You can obviously create your virtual hosts. There are some virtual host templates that you can use. Uh, there are also some tools you can use. You can compile PHP. So I guess you can select a version, compile it, and get it up and running. Uh, there's a server log viewer that you can check out. Uh, there's some real-time stats that you can check. That's basically what's on the dashboard. Um, you can also make some web admin settings. Um, and there's even a link to help docs. So this is pretty cool, I think. The fact that they, you know, they release Open Lightspeed with this administration interface. I feel like when I first started getting into like building web servers, if I had something like this to kind of help me understand a lot of the things that I was doing manually on the command line. Um, I might have learned it a little bit quicker. Uh, although that having been said, maybe maybe it would have been easier to get configured, but then I wouldn't have known what I'm actually doing. Um, and so, you know, there's pros and cons to both. But I think it's pretty cool. Um, and you basically you set up your virtual hosts here. Um, you need to set up your, your site directories on the server itself, but everything else you do pretty much in the... Uh, open Lightspeed admin panel. So I, I think it's pretty cool, worth checking out. Okay. So um, the first thing, and this is where I started from the configuration side of things. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to set the uh, external app to run on PHP 8.1 instead of PHP 7.4. Uh, so you go to server configuration, external app edit, um, and this is all documented in this configuration uh, documentation. So in the open light speed, they've got a basic configuration, setting up virtual hosts and all that. We'll get to that in a second. But then there's some installing and configuring of PHP configuration. Uh, and this is basically what we're doing now. So we go to server configuration, external app edit. So we go to server configuration, external app. There's the light speed SAPI app, LSPHP. Uh, and we edit this, so we click on there, and essentially you change it to, here it is, the command is instead of LSP 7.4 bin LSP PHP, you change it to 8.1. So now it should run the 8.1 version of PHP that is installed. So if I save that, now what's cool is you can restart the web server from here. There's the grace, it's called a graceful restart. So I don't have to type in restart on the command line, I can just hit restart here. 
Um, and if we restart that, and now if we go back to the 8088 port, so I'm going to copy, what am I going to do? I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open it up over here. And it was 8088. And if I click on test PHP, now it shows me PHP 8.1. So cool. So now I'm running a more recent version of PHP, which is what I want. So that's the first step. And now I'm ready to set up virtual hosts. So in the setup virtual host documentation, uh, they, they do talk about the fact that you need to create the directories first. So this looks like you do this in the command line. They don't have a way to, I couldn't find a way to do this in the admin. If anybody knows how to do this in the admin, let me know, but I, I couldn't find a way, but it's basically these commands. So I'm going to copy these out for my purposes. As you can see, I was testing this weekend, so I have it already set up for myself. Um, so in my terminal, I'm going to create those two. Let me just do them one by one. So it's. Uh, user local lsws and then the other one after that so let me hop this over here so we can do this at the same time so that's the first one there we go and then we create the config html and logs directory every time it makes a noise now i'm going to think of chris's duck quack <laughs> And then we need to change. So this one I kind of stumbled across, but I want to explain what we're doing here. So we need to change the ownership of the HTML folder to belong to the nobody, no group, user and group on the server. And the reason for this, and hopefully I'll be able to find it, is in the server configuration, the server is running as the user, nobody, and the group, no group. So when we change the ownership of the HTML directory, when the web server runs the PHP files, it can actually all work. Uh, you might remember if you were here for the Nginx live stream, I forgot to change the server username to the username of the user that owned the directory and there was a permissions issue. Uh, so this is something you do have to do. That isn't, I couldn't find this in the documentation uh, unless I missed it, but I, I had to I had to get this from one of the other articles that I that I had linked up. Um, so we're going to change ownership of the HTML directory specifically because that's where I want the WordPress site to run, to belong to the nobody, no group user. Um, and then you need to make some uh, permission changes. So I'm going to just run these here. So 750 uh, on the directory. And uh, 640 on the files. Now, this is different depending on your server. Some servers might be 755 and 644. Uh, I think that's what they used to be back in the day, if I remember. So I think 755 on the directory and 644 is also fine. Uh, but I installed WordPress and it worked. So um, as far as I know, this should work as well. I didn't try and upload a media file, so I might do that just to check. Um, and then last but not least, you need to set the config directory to be owned by the administration user so they can write your config files for you. Uh, so I'm going to pop that command in there. And there we go. That's right. So that's kind of the last thing I do um, on the servers. I just create the folders for where the, maybe not the last thing, but one of the last things I do is create the folders for where the site's going to sit. Now I can start adding the virtual host. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this instructions over here. And I'm going to go into my server configuration and I'm going to go to virtual hosts. Um, so let's go to virtual hosts and we're going to add a virtual host. Okay, and in this case, the virtual host is going to be Psychotech. Um, no. And this is basically the same as setting up a vhost file in Apache or setting up a, a, a host a host configuration file in Nginx. The host root, you can just pass in the server root uh, variable and then the name of your folder that you created. Uh, the config file sits in the vhost config here, so you can just copy this out obviously replacing whatever you've named your folders in the previous step with, you know, whatever we're doing there. Then it's uh, under enable scripts, external apps, we need to say yes. So that's that one over there. And under restrained, we can say no. Restrained um, is where the files beyond this virtual host can be accessed through this website. So this is a whole thing about access permissions. So I'm going to just leave it as whatever they suggest for now. Uh, and then I'm going to hit save so here it says all directories must pre-exist the web interface will not create the directory for you 
So it does say you will need to create it and set up yourself, which is the step we just did. It says your turn unrestrained in a shared hosting environment. Um, so that's good. It's good that they give you this information. I think that's very cool. It you know, teaches you about how these things work. So now you can hit save. Uh, and what it'll do, it'll say this configuration file does not exist, this vhost. So you can just right here, you can say click to create. Boom. So that's been created. So now I can save this vhost. And it's done. My virtualized file is now created. The formatting is all correct. It's pointing to the right places. So to me, that's very, very cool. Um, and then you've got to go into the virtual host itself. So if we click on the virtual host there and we go to the general tab, we've got to set up a few things. So we've got to set up the document root, uh, which is going to be the location of the HTML directory. So if we click on edit here, we can set the document root. We can also set our domain names. So primary domain is snackrotect.coza. And then for domain aliases, any aliases that you want to use. So I want to be able to use www. I haven't configured that today, but I want to be able to. And then the wildcards for if I want to do multi-site. So I would set those two in there. And I can save that. Then I need to specify my index files. So under index files over here, I can edit those. Um, and this would be first index.html, then index.php. So we can pop those in there and save that. And then we can even enable the rewrite module from here. So in the rewrite tab, this is for doing permalinks, pretty permalinks and all of that kind of stuff. We can say we want to enable rewrite, yes. And we want to auto load from HD access. So this is basically being able to do HD access things for WordPress which is great. So all of this is config configurable in the admin interface, which I really, really like. Um, okay, so now that that's all done, uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to add what's called a listener. So the listener is what listens uh, to the request to the server. And depending on what the request is asking for, it then redirects it to the location of the files. So in this case, we need to set up an HTTP listener um, you would also want to set up an HTTPS listener for any request to the secure version of your URL. If you have um, SSL certificates enabled, I'm not going to worry about them today. So for now, we go to listeners. You'll see there is a default listener listening for port 8088 for that, uh, that interface. So now we can create the HTTP listener. So I'm going to just create a new listener here. So the listener name can be HTTP. The IP address can be... Hang on, why is my saving password? IP address can be any IPv4. The port is port 80. Um, and then secure in this case will be no. If you're setting this up for HTTPS, you would change this from HTTP to HTTPS. You would set the port to port 443, which is the default port for SSL certificates. And then secure would probably be yes. Um, and so you would want to set up both if you're hosting sites. You should be hosting sites with SSL certs. So you should set up both. I'm not going to do it today because I'm not worrying about my certs today because this is purely just setting up a base server, uh, but you get the idea. All right, so now we can save that. And now we need to map the virtual host to one of the listeners. So inside the HTTP listener, we can click on that and we can create multiple virtual host mappings. So this is basically saying when a request comes to the listener on this specific configuration, in this case, any, any IPv4 port 80, take the virtual host for Cycrotech and connect it to any of this configuration of domains. So this could I could just leave this probably as Cycrotech.coza and start at Cycrotech.coza and leave out the www. But I like to sort of, you know, configure it separately. I'm weird that way. Um, but that'll basically allow for any request for the Cycrotech domain for the www.cycrotech or anything that is a subdomain to point to the Cycrotech virtual host and then it'll know where the files are found and what files to serve. So that's the last step there. So we can save that and we can do a graceful restart there. Finally, this music a little bit loud, so I'm gonna turn it down just a tad. There we go. And that's the configuration done. So now everything's set up and ready to rock and roll. So what I'm going to do just to test this is inside of the um, CD, where is it? user, local, lsws. Obviously, this can be anywhere. You can put it anywhere you want to as long as you configure it. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we've put it in the lsws folder. Oh, okay. I'm going to switch to the root user for now. 
Um, just because it makes my life easier. No. No, pseudo. All right, pseudo minus u root. So, no, pseudo su root. Yes, <laughs> I've forgotten how to do this. Um, so it was cd user local lsws cycrotech HTML. Now, the reason I'm doing this as the root user is because the root user can access anything owned by nobody or no group. So just for the purposes of our things here today, I'm going to create an index.html file. And I'm just going to put in the word Psychrotech just so we can check that everything is working. And now if I go to psykrotk.tlzda, I should see Psychrotech. Yay, it works. <laughs> okay. So now we can remove the index file. And what I want to do now is I want to install WPCLI. So WPCLI just makes it that much easier to... Uh, so it says, Chris says, Nano is a pain. I know it's a pain, but I use it every day. Oh, I still love it. <laughs> um, I need to now find my instructions because I've lost them somewhere. Oh, wait, I moved them over here because I want to install WPCLI. <clears throat> so... WPCLI is the WordPress uh, command line tool. It allows you to run a whole bunch of WordPress -y related commands. So I'm going to just copy one command at a time here. Uh, hang on a sec. There we go. No, I want one. I don't want all of them. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to download the file file. And then I'm going to change the permissions and I need a sudo in front of this let's update that in a second there we go and then I'm going to move it to that location <clears throat> there we go so now I can just run wp from anywhere and I can run wpcli commands which is great then what I want to do is I want to set up the database so um Let's log in as the root user. Hope I can remember that password. There we go. And then I can create the database. So let's go create database psychrotech. And then it's create user. I'm gonna actually just copy this out because it's way too long to remember. Um, and I'm just gonna call it psychrotech db password for now. go uh, password oh it doesn't oh i need to have a better password okay let's give it a better password it's because i set it to two not one um i wonder if, it, if it'll be happy with um hash and a bang let's see nope uh, okay i'm gonna have to make this a little bit more secure so let's do this so let's do There. I'm gonna have to come up with a better password in a second if not. Ah, good grief. Uh, I probably need some numbers in there. Let's do some good old numbers, number substitutions. See, when I tested this, I didn't go for password level two. Yeah, it likes that. Okay, let me copy this out because I'm not going to remember this. And I'm just going to actually, no, not edit site, <laughs> edit post. I'm going to just update this, uh, this password quickly. While I'm there, I'm going to just grab these. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so that's that done. So let's save that. And then 
we've got the password, we've got the password, we've got the database set up with the password, we've got WPCLI installed. So now I'm going to switch back to the root user. Um, and I'm only doing this because I need to be able to run it inside of that um, um, LSWS directory, which is owned by the nobody no group. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run. I need to make notes about this. I do have sudo cv. Okay, cool. I do have it there. So now I need to run wp call download allow root because you, for security purposes, you really shouldn't run wp commands as a root user. But for this case, it's fine. So that will download the core WordPress files. And then I'm just going to follow the standard WordPress installer. I'm not going to, you can do it from the command line. Um, I'm just going to do it from the web interface because it's just easier. So now if I go back to Cycrotech, there we go. Um, so let's go. So the database name is Cycrotech. The username is Cycrotech. Password I've got in the browser, in the clipboard. That's all fine. So let's submit that. Yep, run the installation. No, we don't have to save that. Okay, that's all done. Uh, 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 uh. And if you guys want to try and log into this thing once installed, that's fine. I don't care. Um, I'm going to nuke this anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Indeed, it would have been sniped so fast. Um, I. Yeah, if people want to snipe it, that's fine. I'll nuke the server afterwards. Uh, so, I, so I don't care if I don't have a popular stream. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. We are up and running. Um, so now, hey, P Georgie V. Um, so now we've got the WordPress install running. So now we can just follow the standard. Um, let me just clear this out. The standard... Uh, WordPress multi-site setup. I want to test media files quickly. I want to test that I can install media files quickly. Um, I'm just going to select files here. I'll just install some media file. Um, okay. So I think I need to change the paths for that for those directories. Let me just go back here. I thought about that when I was doing this. I think it needs to be 644. Um, so let's go back here. And... This needs to be 755. And this needs to be 644. And then I should be able to upload media files. Uh, it's not something I thought of testing. So. Okay, let's see if it works now. Um, No. Uh, okay, so there's definitely a permissions area somewhere. So that one I'm going to have to figure out. Um, I'll figure that out and update my... I'm not going to worry about it now. I'll figure that out and update my uh, my post after this. Um, but now we can jump on over to the uh, multi-site network setups. Um and basically, we can allow multi-site to be true. So let's do that. So let's nano the WP config file. Uh, let's just pop this in over here. Okay. And then we can save that. And now we should be able to go to the network setup. There we go. And we'll stick with subdomains. That's fine. Okay, that'll work fine. So now we can just copy this out. And pop it in here. Here we go. And now, just mix it over here. Now we need to add this to our HT access. So no, no, no. HT access. So we should to delete all the current HT access lines. And it's going to ask me to log in again. And I didn't save the password. So I'm going to have to change the password. Um, 
I'm going to do that off screen so I can change it to something I remember. Oh, I'm not even going to be able to change it off screen. I can do it on the server, I guess. So let me do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a terminal off screen quickly. And there's a word, there's a WPCLI command that I can run. User change or something, change password or something, user update. There we go. WP user update. Um, I think it's just admin management this user pass equals oh, I need to do the allow root thing again. Uh, it's giving me an error about MySQL extension, which is required by WordPress. Um, that's that's annoying. Okay, I'm going to have to do this. I may have just balked this whole thing. <laughs> that's okay. I can I can fix that. So let's take a step back here. Let's change the config. Uh, I mean PHP, not shell scripts. <laughs> I always forget to remember the password. Let's do that. Now this should allow me to go back to, yes, the dashboard. And then I can change my password here. So I can do this off screen quickly so that I can Change it to something I'll remember. Okay. Okay, password has changed, so that's good. So now we can come back and go and back and do the network things. So let's do that again. Uh, So now I just want the first one. I think it might actually just work now. Let's see, because the HTAccess is still the same. So it might just work. Yeah, there we go. So now we can log in. No. And yay, we're in our site. Um, and now we are a network sites. So now I can create multiple sites. So let's create a new site quickly. And we'll just call it Bob. And it's Bob. <laughs> and there we go. Let's add that. Okay, and there's our sites. So we've got sites in our dashboard. We're going to have different sites. I'm going to change the Bob site theme, but I think I need to activate themes in the network to do that. So let's go over to themes. Let's enable 2023. And then let's go back to the. Right. Let's go back to this one. And then let's activate a different theme. And so now I should have the Bob site with that theme and the parent site with that theme. There you go. <laughs> okay, um, so that was setting up a WordPress site on Open Lightspeed. Um, the media thing I would like to figure out, so I kind of feel like I want to spend a few moments now figuring that out. Um, because that was the one thing I didn't think about. Let's see if it'll work here. Unable to create. Wonder if. Let's just have a look here. Let's see what the permissions are. So it's all owned by root. 
That's probably why. Be oh, that's why. Because the root user installed all the files. So what I need to do is I need to set all of the files to be owned by the nobody, no group user. So... Or I could just... This might work. CH owned. Nobody. No group. WP content. I think you can just say recursive. Um, I think that works. So let's have a look. Yeah, that looks good. Let's try it. So let's refresh this. Let's add a media file. Yay! Okay, so that was the one thing that I didn't have. So let me actually copy that out and I'll add that to my to my page because that was quite useful to think about. Um, probably should be everything in this directory, but I'm not going to worry about that now. So let me go back over here. Where were we? Um, have I lost that page now? No, I think I just didn't didn't keep it open. Uh, so let's go back to my blog. Uh, and let me just hit the post, and let me just make a note about setting the ownership after the install. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Um, The owner WP content directory. Okay, so that was that. All right, um, and that's it. And so that was a lot quicker than setting up Nginx or Apache. Um, and I think that's just because Open Lightspeed just makes it that much easier with the web with the sort of web ad admin interface. Um, it's also because I tested all of this last week um, to make sure that it all does work. But there you go. Um, all of the settings for setting up Open Lightspeed. As I mentioned in my post, um, it doesn't have all of the sort of security things that you probably could do. And it doesn't have um caching and things like that installed it's just the basic setup um but i was quite impressed actually when i was setting this up i was quite impressed by what was possible how quick it was uh, i'm going to turn the server off now quickly uh, just because i don't need it anymore um but yeah go check that out um if you want the post i will link to the post in the chat um, and i'll link to it probably in the description in the recording as well with all the instructions um but it was a fun little experiment i enjoyed learning how to set up open light speed um I could definitely find myself using it more and more. Um, I'm curious to know how it might work if I switched my local development environment from Apache to Open Lightspeed. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it for today. Um, I had set aside two hours for this, but it took a lot quicker. And I think that's you know got to do with how Open Lightspeed works. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for the recording for this, it will be out on the YouTube channel in the next couple of days. Um, thank you for all those who joined. Thank you for Chris for, for joining along uh, and passing comments about my lack of security. Um, but uh, I hope the rest of you all have, not the rest of you, all of you, including Chris, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, rest of your week. Um, and the next time I do this, I'm going to try and do this again in about two weeks' time. I'm going to try and do these a little bit uh, less of a gap in between. But the next time I'm doing this, I'm thinking of doing some work uh, in JavaScript, which I haven't done in a while. Um, there is a feature that I want to add to something called WordPress Playground, which is a WordPress um, WebAssembly image that runs in the browser. And there's some features that I want to add to something there. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to do that next time in about two weeks. So check it, keep an eye out for that. Um, if you're looking for wherever I'm streaming, you can always just go to the, the Meetup page, the WordPress uh, Social Learning Meetup page. That's where I post all the live stream um, dates and locations and all those kind of things. So you're welcome to go check that out. But otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. Uh, and I'll see you hopefully in two weeks' time. Bye.